I'm, I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker. Um, this is Andy Stanton. He is a past member of our Association Board of Directors. And actually, one way that we can stretch this, I don't think that we've actually um, recognized the folks who are currently members of our Board of Directors. They wanted to be here to support the chapters, and of course they help in their individual communities, but they also um, you know, work with um, chapter issues on the board. So why don't we um, have those folks who are members of our Board of Directors stand up. You all have met Dennis Spratt. We have uh, Rich Dryling. Denise Riedel's in the back, Leanne Curtis, and John Armstrong. So I'd like to thank all of them for coming and uh, being a part of this today and supporting the chapter system. But um, back when Andy was on campus, he was one of our faculty reps, just as John is now on the board of directors. Um, he currently is with Eagle Communications. And I don't get to say this enough, one of the initiatives that, that came from um, an alumni, from the Tiger Generational T-Shirt Project was was Tiger Gold on Friday. For those of you who are, who are in Hayes, you know that um, we encourage folks to show their Tiger Pride on Fridays, especially on campus, by wearing their Tiger Gold on Friday. Um, a group of us who work on marketing for the university um, started this group and we reached out to Eagle and asked them if they would be our corporate sponsor for the program. They print a thousand or more t-shirts every year that we've been giving out these past two years to encourage students and the people in the community to support Tiger Gold on Friday. They, they have printed posters for us and have helped promote um, the Tiger Gold on Friday initiative throughout the community. I don't get a chance very often to thank them publicly and, you know, via the interwebs. So um, I want to thank uh, your help specifically and, and also Eagle for, for that. I think it's been a great initiative. And he's even wearing his Tiger Gold on Friday. Tiger Gold on Friday, yeah. yeah. So it is my pleasure to introduce you to Stanton. Well, thank you, Charlene. Wow, this is a hot mic. Um, uh, I put the, I was uh, telling uh, Kim, I guess, a few minutes ago, that <clears throat> when you're putting together a social media presentation, it's like you're doing a new one every time you do it because social media changes so often. So this morning I went to the office and my wife, um, had the kids doing about three different things this morning and they're going to soccer games and doing something out of the church and I said just drop me off at the office and then I'll just take a car from the office down there and not a big deal so as I she dropped me off at the office I went in and grabbed a tub of Legos for my seven-year-old to be entertained because I had an extra tub of Legos at my office and opened the door ran in and did it and went right back out and locked myself out of the office all right first thing this morning so thank goodness for a, a cooperative co-worker who I called and I said could you come bring your keys by the office but anyway I was working on the presentation this morning and watched the live stream of everything that's gone on this morning so I feel like I've, I got to see all of the introductions and everything like that so I will introduce myself I, my name is my Andy Stanton um, I graduated in 93 with my bachelor's degree in communication studies and then again in 97 with my master's of communication studies um, this is actually the third time I've lived in Hayes. Um, I moved to Hayes in 1988 to go to Fort Hayes. I moved away. I moved back in 1995 to go to Fort Hayes. I moved away to Dodge City and came back in 2005 to come back to Fort Hayes where I taught for five years. And then um, in 2010, um, went to Eagle Communications um, where I am a marketing specialist and I do get paid to be on Facebook every day. Um, so that's one of the, the, the great things about social media. But when I was teaching here at Fort Hayes, um, I started in the fall of 2005 teaching in the Department of Communication Studies. And I taught classes in advertising and public relations. And also in 2005, there was this new thing called Facebook that had just come up on the campus of Harvard University. And I'll never forget reading um, an issue of the university leader that was talking about Facebook. And I'd heard my students kind of talking about it, and I was thinking, what is this? So I'm curious by nature, so, and I was lucky enough to have a .edu email address. So I created a Facebook account. And Mm, I was like, okay, this is, you know, kind of something, whatever, and really didn't pay much attention to it till about, oh, probably about a year later, and then it started really starting to 
gather speed and all that. And then one of my research interests um, here at the university became social media and how we um, communicate differently now because of social media. And I really tore into it dealing with advertising and public relations. And um, do, ended up starting to teach classes on social media um, at Fort Hayes and just did a lot of different things. And that is why I ended up at Eagle Communications because they were looking for a consultant um, to manage their social media and they hired me to do that while I was still teaching here and uh, ended up, we made it a full-time deal. So that's a little bit of background about myself. Um, Today, uh, we're going to just kind of briefly navigate social media to kind of help you um, be able to uh, work together with your chapters a little bit. Um, I brought three books that are uh, talking about different things with social media and just with marketing and communications. Um, one of them is called Citizen Marketers When People Are the Message is a very good book that you might be interested in. Uh, the next one is called Creating Customer Evangelists, How Loyal Customers Become Volunteer Sales Force. Thinking of it as how loyal Fort Hayes alums become a volunteer sales force for you and your chapters. And then this one, <clears throat> which I have up here on the presentation is called Social Nomics. Social Nomics is a very good book um, looking at how social media is changing um, how we communicate. And the reason that I bring that one up is because the Social Nomics came out in about, well, let me look here, probably 2009, I'm guessing. Let's see what the copyright date is on it. Copyright 2009 by Eric Qualman. But how he decided to promote the book was by using social media, and he created a YouTube video. I'm sure some of you have probably seen maybe the original YouTube video or maybe an um, update of that YouTube video, but we're going to watch it right now because it gives us a ton of different facts and statistics that maybe you hadn't thought about regarding social media. Well, hold on a second. There. There we go.
so Eric Quallman's book, Social Nomics, became a New York Times bestseller from, being, from promoting it on YouTube. The original um, video of this that had the statistics from the original book ha had well over a million hits. And he has updated it every year with new uh, statistics. He has a great website called socialnomics.org. Um, can we pass these out? I did. Oh, okay. Suzanne passed these out. Okay. Everybody should have gotten one of these. This is just um, something for you to take notes with. Um, it's just uh, some of the slides from here, but wanted to be able to show you that. Excuse me. So, anything, anybody find anything interesting about that video? Any statistics that you hadn't seen before? <laughs> anything that stands out, particularly? <laughs> All of them, everything? Uh, the one that has always kind of struck my mind was that YouTube is considered the second largest search engine in the world. You know, so you know Google owns YouTube, so boy, they've got number one and two on the market. But um, to think about how many people utilize YouTube just as a search engine of all sorts of different things. Um, anything else? Facebook being the third largest country in the world. Whenever I give presentations to high school students, I say, okay, we're going to start with a geography lesson. I said, you know, what's the most populous country in the world? And oh, some of them will end up saying China. And then we, when we get to India, and then I, they'll get, and I'll say, how many people live in the United States? Oh, and we get all sorts of different answers, but about 330 some million. And then when I tell them that Facebook has a billion people, in it. That is just pretty amazing. And it's been interesting since I started doing research on Facebook, um, you know, in about, it came out in 2005, started seeing statistics in 2006, 2007, 2008, how it was growing. And when it went from about, oh, 300 million to a billion was just like that. It was amazing. It was growing exponentially. How fast um, it was being—it was taking over the universe. So, um, let's talk just a little bit. We have a wide variety of. Um, well, my computer fell asleep here, so let me go back here to. Uh, those of you who know me, I will never pass up an opportunity to show you my kids. Um, this is Jackson, Grace, and Gabe um, at a, on a fishing trip a couple weeks ago. But we consider um, people with, when you're talking about social media and the digital aids, there are two different groups. There are digital natives, like my three kids, my seven-year-old son, Gabriel, right here, is in second grade. And since he was about, well, at least a kindergartner, he could get around on my iPhone better than I could. Um, he is a Lego champion, loves to um, build Legos, all sorts of different things. He utilizes YouTube to um, see what people are building with Legos. There are all sorts of videos on YouTube about how to build Legos. He also loves to build um, uh, paper airplanes. One day he came home from school and said, Dad, I want to build some paper airplanes. So I showed him the basic paper airplane that I know how to do. And he said, no, let's go online. He said, let me see your computer. I want to Google uh, paper airplanes. So he did. And he then Googled paper airplane patterns and how to build paper airplanes. And he, by in about an hour's time, was building a paper airplane that went through our family room, our kitchen, and our living room. So probably about the distance of this entire room. And I was like, wow. So they're using it for all sorts of different things. Um, it's second nature for them to know about cell phones, iPods, the internet, everything such as that. So if there's digital natives, there's got to be some digital immigrants. And that's probably what maybe a, several of us in this room probably feel like at most time. In my bio, I always say that I'm a digital um, immigrant striving on my naturalization papers to be a digital native. But 
These are actually some of my ancestors. This lady right here is my great-great-grandmother. So um, this picture, none of them very, looked very happy in any of those pictures, did they? And if you really can't see it too well up on the screen, but there is a guy right there inside. I guess he didn't get invited to, get, to be taken in the family picture. But you can kind of see his nose right there. But we, we don't know what the family story is on why he didn't get to be in the picture, but he got in there anyway. I guess an, an 1800s version of photobombing. So anyway, so a lot of us are probably digital immigrants. We're trying to learn all of this stuff and uh, figure out what it all is so we can keep up with uh, today's uh, generation. So we'll kind of walk through some of these things. That, um, First of all, I want to talk about Web 2.0. Is anybody familiar with the term Web 2.0? Okay, Craig's shaking his head here. There's, uh, how many have never heard the term Web 2.0? Okay. Well, that kind of gives us, I want you to think back in time just a little bit. Okay, it's 2013 right now. When I was a senior at Fort Hayes State University in 1993, 20 years ago this past spring, I graduated with my bachelor's degree. They, the week of graduation, they had the groundbreaking ceremony in the tennis courts behind Forsyth Library to build Tamanic Hall, 20 years ago. Okay. In 1993, our connection to the internet was, I know here on campus we had a lot of computers with black screens and green type on them. And we all, uh, some of us had, If you, I happened to work on student publications, I was the editor of the yearbook. And so I had a campus email address. I still remember it, it was coas at fhsu.edu. CEO for communication, AS for Andy Stanton. I still remember that. Why? I don't know. But anyway, that's about all we had for the internet. We had email. 93, we had dial-up internet access. Can anybody still remember that horrible sound that the modem makes, you know, when you're dialing in? And it was really slow. In 1995, two years later, I came back to Fort Hayes to work on my master's degree. Tamana Call opened then. And I remember going into the computer labs in Tamanic Hall, and there were prob desks of probably 30 or 40 computers. There were four of those on the main floor of Tamanic Hall uh, that we were going in there and we were surfing the internet. You know, and we was just, and you had to wait in line to be able to get in uh, to, to surf the net. And what, think about the websites that we surfed at that time. They were very static. They were something that a, an established organization or business was putting up. From a sales standpoint, they probably, somebody probably came in and said, oh, we need to get on this thing they called the internet. Here's our latest sales brochure. Put the same information up there on the internet. That was in 95. We had dial-up access. Um, AOL was kind of the big thing. Um, that was, you know, if you ever clicked on a picture, uh, you might as well go to grab a cup of coffee or, or a Coke because it was going to take forever to download line by line on your screen. That was what the internet used to be like. That's what we would consider Web 1.0. Enter Web 2.0, where it's where we are today. We're probably even at a Web 3.0 now, but we're looking at a lot of words calling collaboration. Wikipedia, which I'm, we're not teaching an academic class, so I can use Wikipedia as a source, okay? Don't tell any of the professors on campus that we're using Wikipedia. But um, Wikipedia, was, which is kind of the ultimate in Web 2.0 because it's user generated, says a Web 2.0 site may allow users to interact and collaborate with each other in a social media dialogue as creators of user-generated content in a virtual community in contrast to websites where people are limited to the passive using of content, viewing of content. Examples include social networking sites, blogs, wikis, folksonomies, I'm not exactly sure what a folksonomy is, video sharing sites, hosted services, and web applications, and uh, mashups. Um, 
We are utilizing the internet so much differently now than we were 20 years ago. We are collaborating. We have more user-generated content than um, those official uh, businesses and organizations with their content. And so we can utilize all of these different things with social media to help communicate. Um, there's all sorts of different social media sites, but we're going to concentrate on about five different ones today. Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, I'm talking about some blogging, uh, Google Docs, and I brought, put in MailChimp also, just in case anybody was interested in looking at um, email marketing. Now, I know that you have op opportunities with the Alumni Association to be able to do all sorts of different things, but just want to um, talk a little bit about all of those. So uh, let's go to our first one of Facebook. Okay, this is my, I'm gonna stay here. I'll just turn this off now. Put my glasses on so I can see it here. Um, how many of you are not on Facebook? Okay, so that, makes it easier. Six, seven years ago, I had to have it reversed the other way. But um, Facebook is a great way for us to communicate. Um, and I do know that each one of the um, chapters has a, what we call a fan page. I'm gonna take you in on the back inside of a fan page to show you some of the tools that you can utilize to see how you're reaching your audience and other ways of reaching doing it even better. So I'm just going to go to um, to, our, to Eagle Communications, um, our fan page, and um, I'll go to another Facebook page. And just to show you the difference between two different ones, Okay, here's the Fort Hayes State Alumni and Friends um, Facebook page. I found this yesterday and became a fan of it. So I'm looking at this like any normal person is going to look at it. If I come back here to the Eagle Communications uh, fan page, I have a whole different topper here before I go down to our regular topper of what would see. This is what is going to give me Oh, I can boost my posts if I want to. But it's going to give me some insights about all of that. Um, it gives you information about how you would like to place an ad and various things like that. Um, people can message a page, which is privately, which is not put up out on the Facebook page. This is where we get those messages right here. Um, we get notifications. If somebody um, liked a post that we had, we can see how much it reached, all of that. But one other thing that I want to look here is I want to view insights. Oh, and they keep improving it, and I really don't need to see all of that. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, I can look here to see um, various posts that we've made to see how well they were engaged and how many people saw them. Um, something else that I can see here, and of course, one other thing, they do keep changing them. Let me go look here to page likes. Um, as of today, we have 1,312 likes, and I can look at the demographics if they, people, let's click here on people and see, here we are. I can look at the demographics of the people who are, are fans of our page. So, our, our biggest uh, chunk is females ages 25 to 44. We have a 17% of 25 to 34 and then 35 to 44. So that, this allows me to be able to start looking about, okay, this is our target audience who have, are already here, and now maybe if I'm wanting to build more people, um, I want to go out to some of those other audiences also. But by having a fan a Facebook fan page, it allows you to really kind of dig in to uh, ways of communicating with your uh, audience. Something else I would recommend for you, the chapters that um, 
for those, how, is anybody in here an administrator of a chapter fa fan book, Facebook fan page? Okay. One thing that you want to do is make sure that there's more than one of you because that can kind of be all sorts of overwhelming stuff. But uh, making sure that you do have maybe two or three active people who can um, monitor things and post things to the fan page. Um, one of the greatest things <clears throat> with Facebook fan pages is the Pages Manager app for the iPhone and for the iPad. Um, there's also an app for Android too um, that you can uh, actually just manage that particular page and, and act as that page on Facebook. And it really allows you to, you don't have to, you know, a lot of times when I'm working with people about that they're wanting to put up fan pages, they're like, well, I don't want it to get all tangled up in my personal Facebook page. By utilizing Facebook Pages Manager, boom, you are, when you are online with your app, you are that um, page. And also, if you'll notice um, here on the top of the screen that it says <coughs> that you are posting, commenting, and liking as Eagle Communications change to Andy Stanton. While I'm on my fan page, if I like something, it will be that Eagle Communications like this, not my personal thing. So that's something else that um, you can uh, always do to make sure to, to kind of keep things going. Okay. Make sure that we're not going crazy on time here. Um, let's go back here to the Fort Hayes, uh, the Kansas City area chapter. I have 155 likes. Something that is very important for you to help grow those likes and thinking about more people who are liking it, you have a bigger audience that so you can get that message out, is making sure when you're having these events that were talked about earlier today, take pictures and post pictures of the people at the events. And if you know them personally, tag them. <coughs> because when you tag somebody in a photo, then it shows up on their page. And more than likely, an FHSU alum is going to have friends who are FHSU alums. And they are going to see that, oh, Joe was at a um, chapter event in Kansas City. And well, maybe I live in Southwest Kansas, but I couldn't have gone to that. But then that gets me thinking, well, maybe there's a, a chapter in Southwest Kansas, or I want to talk to Joe and see the next time they have something, I want to be involved with all of that. Make sure that you're doing things at your events and bringing in that social media. Um, utilize the events. Um, portion of Facebook where you can create an event and invite people to. But one thing you want to make sure if you're utilizing that event, um, you can, as a Facebook user, you can say, yes, I'm going to attend or maybe I'm not going to attend or I'm going to decline it. Make sure that you reiterate to the people that you're inviting that to is that isn't your official RSVP for the event through the alumni office. Uh, because, uh, yes, Charlene paid me extra to say that. Excuse me. Um, but those are some really thinking about how you utilize Facebook, whether it be posting photos, sh creating events, uh, po just creating posts, you know, sharing things. You know, one of the biggest things we do online is sharing other content. You know, follow the FHSU, follow Victor E. Tiger, follow the Alumni Association, follow FHSU, FHSU Athletics. I'm sure we can get you a whole list of the different uh, FHSU pages that are out there that you can follow, that you can start getting that information, and then share it on your page. That way people are going to to be interacting with that page more and more. Because the more information that is shared on that page, the more interaction you will get with your members of your chapter. Okay? Let me, ah, going to sleep again. Talk about Twitter real quick. <laughs> Who in here tweets? We have a lot of active Twitters. I bet you if we asked um, from a generational standpoint 
Uh, I know this morning when I was watching, we have an alum from 2010 and an alum from 1957. Okay? <clears throat> I bet you the more Twitter people are the ones closer to the 2010 graduate. Okay? Um, Twitter is, again, once, uh, it's a great uh, tool. Most people who utilize Twitter utilize it on their mobile devices. It's a great way to direct web traffic or to get out a quick message. Um, you can use 140 characters, There's not, and that includes spaces, so you have to be very brief. But once again, inclu including a web link to be able to go to um, either your Facebook page or the FHSU page, doing various things like that, being able to get the word out um, about maybe a particular event. Twitter can be very helpful. WordPress. How many of you blog? Okay, we've got one, one sole blogger out there. How many of you have ever read a blog? Okay, we've got lots of blog readers, okay. Something you might want to think about is, especially if you have um, a very active chapter or you're wanting to get that chapter even more active, create a blog for that chapter. You know, now of course you want to work with Charlene and Suzanne and Deborah and with the alumni office to make sure that we're following with different university standards and all of that, but it's very easy to set up a blog. You go to wordpress.com or you go to blogger.com and you can have one set up in about three or four minutes. Um, there's lots of uh, great ways to be able to, to share chapter information and, and to promote that and for people to connect on all of that. Um, just, as an, just for an example, um, Charlene will notice this one, if I can spell it right. H-U-R-I-C-A-N-E-S dot wordpress dot com. Um, my kids, along with Charlene's kids, are on the local competitive swim team that um, we needed to have a website, but we didn't want to have to pay for anything because we're all volunteers, and none of us knew a lot about HTML coding, and so we went and created a, a blog, but it works as a website where we have, this is where we disseminate all of our information for our swim team from registration and when the sign up for the next um, swim meet is to what regulations are to who our coaches are and sharing photos and, and doing all of that. Um, that is another way to do that and it, once again it's free. Um, there are, you would be surprised at how many mainstream websites are powered by a blogging software such as WordPress. WordPress is a very popular blogging software. Here is one, for example, HayesPost.com. If you're wanting to know what the, this is my selfless plug for Eagle Communications. Um, if you're wanting to know what the latest news is in Hayes and on campus, go to HayesPost.com. But HayesPost.com and all of our other post sites is powered by WordPress. It's a very easy to use blogging software. So that's another um, opportunity for you. Google Docs. Charlene asked me to talk a little bit about Google Docs. How many of you um, are familiar with Google Docs? Google Docs is a wonderful tool, especially when you're needing to collaborate for all sorts of people. Ooh, we can, we can watch ourselves live right here. Ooh, there we are. Everybody wave to, to the camera. There we are. Yeah, showing that I'm scratching my, or taking my glasses off, it looks like. But anyway, see, there it is. There we are. Showing that I'm scratching my, or taking my glasses off. So there's a few second delay. I'm going to get rid of that real quick. Um, I was talking about Google Docs. Thank you. Google Docs, some also known as Google Drive, they've kind of changed it just a little bit, which allows you to create online 
uh, databases, documents, um, presentations, anything that you can pretty much do in Microsoft Word, you can do it online and collaborate with multiple people and it's live collaboration. You can have a shared document. Let's say that you're working on an agenda for a next meeting or coming up with a plan for whatever your chapter wants to come up with. You guys can be on uh, maybe on the telephone and then working on this doc all together at the same time in different communities. Let's say you're needing to gather information about t-shirt sizes for all things. Maybe you're going to do a t-shirt um, something to do with your uh, next event and you're needing to know who all wants to order t-shirts and what sizes you want. You can create a form online with Google Docs and you send out the link to the form and people then fill it out and when they hit submit it automatically dumps right into a um, spreadsheet for you. Here's one for example of oh, t-shirt sizes, that's why I said we use this at work for all the time. We do a lot of t-shirts, but um, we were gathering contact information for all of our different post sites around um, the state and uh, this, is, this is the spreadsheet that it comes out to and all people did was we went up and set up a form that asked for name, location, office phone, cell phone, and email address and they entered that in and they hit submit and it's right there in a spreadsheet. I can go download that as a Microsoft um, Excel spreadsheet. Boom. Just like that. Taking away a lot of the, the work um, about all of that. This right here is a document um, that we created. We were working on a joint press release, Kent Stewart and I with the university, and um, we put this document together so we both could add the things that needed to be added into, so we weren't emailing documents back and forth and making sure that who had the latest version and all of that. Google Docs. All it takes is you have to have a Google account. You know, and if you don't have a Gmail account, go get a Gmail account. It's the best thing that I've ever had, I think, to, to be able to simplify my life with email a lot of different times. So that's another way of doing that. Okay, let's see where we're at on time. Okay, I want to touch one more thing and then we'll be done. And that is, um, I know the, the university and the alumni association can do emails for you, but let's say you're wanting to be able to, to do those um, with quite a little bit of ease and to be able to do something if you need to send something out just like that. Once you have gathered emails of people in your chapter, you can utilize Constant Contact. Is, any, is anybody familiar with Constant Contact? Okay. Is anybody familiar with MailChimp? Okay. MailChimp is a great way to be able to send um, HTML emails and you can do this um, as long as you have less than 500 email addresses and send less than like, I think it's 2,000 emails a month. I'm not sure if they've changed it or not. It's free. And it allows you to create HTML campaigns. You can track what they've clicked on. You can track what they've opened. Um, and you can track who has opened the email. And it's um, when you're dealing with email marketing, um, we have to deal with all sorts of spam laws that have been passed. Um, this makes sure that you are complying with all of those spam laws. It gives people the option to opt out of your email list, doing all sorts of things. So it's MailChimp.com. Okay. Um, I've gone through a ton of different things in the past 45 minutes. Um, my contact information is on the... Uh, last slide of your presentation. If you would like to get in contact with me, I don't know if I have all of the answers, but um, I'd be more than happy to kind of help you brainstorm something, saying, hey, we're kind of wanting to do this. What do you think would be the best way? I would love, because I would like to learn from you also um, to see what uh, we can do. But um, if, if you happen to have any questions, um, I'll be here. I know you have um, a wrap-up session here real quick but I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. So thank you very much.